Greetings all. A warm welcome to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends. You know that you're very welcome to my new broadcasting, The Way to Love. And today I'm going to talk about love one another. This is your Pastor Yadi. This is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15, 12. What is love? And it's like I hear the brains cracking all from all of you. Uh, you start expressing yourself with what comes to you in understanding what the word love and what is love is. Well, come with me. Take a look at a rose. Is it possible for the rose to say, I shall offer my fragments to good people and withhold it from bad people? Or can you imagine a lamp that withholds its rays from a wicked person? who seeks to walk in its light. It could only do that by ceasing to be a lamp and observe how helplessly and indiscriminately a tree gives its shade to everyone. Good and bad, young and old, high and low, to animals and humans, in every living creature, even to the one who seeks to cut it down. So this is the first quality of love. It's indiscriminated character. That is why we are exhorted to be like God who makes his sun to shine on good and bad alike and makes his rain to fall on saints and sinners alike. So you must be all goodness as your heavenly Father is all goodness. Contemplate in astonishment to share goodness of the rose, the lamp, the tree, for there you have an image of what love is all about. How does one attain this quality of love? Anything you do will only make it forced, cultivated, and therefore phony, for love cannot be forced. There is nothing you can do, but there is something you can drop. Observe the marvelous change that comes over you the moment you stop seeing people as good and bad, as saints and sinners, and begin to see them as unaware and ignorant. You must drop your false belief that people can sin in awareness. No one can sin in the light of awareness. Sin occurs, not as we mistakenly think in malice, but in ignorance. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. To see this is to acquire the indiscriminated quality one so admire in the rose, the lamp and the tree. And here is a second quality of love. It's gratuitousness. Like the tree, the rose, the lamp, it gives and asks for nothing in return. And how we despise a man who chews of his wife is determined not by any quality she may have, but by the amount of money she will bring as dowry. Such a man 
who rightly say loss not the woman, but the financial benefit she's bringing him. But is your one? one I mean, is your own love any different when you seek the company of those who bring you emotional gratification and avoid those who don't? When you are positively disposed toward people who give you what you want and live up to your expectations and are negative, are indifferent toward those who don't. Here too, there is only one thing that you need to do acquire this quality of gratuitousness. that characterizes love. You can open your eyes and see just seeing, just exposing your so-called love for what it really is. A camouflage for selfishness and greed is a major step towards arriving at the second quality of love. The third quality of love is its unselfconsciousness. Love so enjoys the loving that it is blissfully unaware of itself. The way the lamp is busy shining with no thoughts of whether it is benefiting others or not. The way a rose gives out is pregnant simply because there is nothing else it can do, whether there is someone to enjoy the fragments or not. So they have no consciousness of any merit or of doing good. Their left hand has no consciousness of what their right hand does. Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty and help you? The final quality of love is its freedom. The moment Kurshion or control, or conflict enters, love dies. Think how the rose, the tree, the lamp leave you completely free. The tree will make no effort to drag you into its shade if you are in danger of a sunstroke. The lamp will not force its light on you lest you stumble in the dark. Think for a while of all the cushion and control that you submit to on the part of others when you so anxiously live up to their expectations in order to buy their love and approval or because you fear you will lose them. Each time you submit to this control of this cushion, you destroy the capacity to love which is your very nature. For you cannot but to do others what you allow others to do to you. Contemplate that all the control and cushion in your life and hopefully this contemplation alone will cause them to drop. The moment they drop, freedom will rise and freedom is just another word for love. What is love? And take a look at a rose or a tree or something else and contemplate love is freedom. And we are all in this position of still learning to love one another. May the Holy Spirit guide you and help you when you contemplate or are in a place, maybe in a large group of people, and put yourself 
in your contemplation outside of that group and observe what comes to you and how do you experience love. This is your Pastor Yadi.